Hi guys, welcome to the NHL 20 Best Tuner Video Guide. Uh, I have played around with the tuners for a little bit now, and I have, think I have created the best tuners for balanced and fair play on NHL. I recommend everyone go out and play with the tuner for a couple games before coming back and criticizing or making changes to the tuner. And if you do have better changes that you would like to make, you can just simply post it on the comment section and I will use this as a message board for improvements. So with that being said, let's jump in. It's under gameplay sliders on any single player mode in NHL. That means franchise mode, versus mode, any kind of those single player modes where it's just you. Uh, under general, there's a lot of settings you could choose here. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. But under uh, general, we left it at latest, but custom. Yep, okay. <laughs> we left the game speed at 3.6. Fatigue effect, this will adjust how the, the effect that being tired has on player performance. I bump this up. If your players are tired, I want them to perform at less than peak ability. Uh, this was also set very low, fatigue recovery. I set that up so that your players will f cover on the bench much faster than normal. Injury occurrence I left alone. Uh, skating, big issue for a lot of people. A lot of people hate skating. So this is what I did. The back skating I set to 40%. This slider decides how much speed a player loses when back skating. The lower the value, the slower players will skate backwards compared to how fast they skate forwards. I set this down because a player skating backwards should not be able to keep up with a player skating forwards at full sprint. Hustle type, I left authentic. I You might want to go back to speed burst. Uh, the, the authentic hustle type has its issue, uh, as some people have seen, where people will just sauce the puck to activate the hustle to get that speed boost. So maybe they just go back to speed burst where people can decide when they want to hustle. Puck carrier agility, I actually lowered the agility 10 points. It was up from 50, I lowered it down to 40. I think that if you carry the puck, you should be slightly less agile than if you do not have the puck. Not by much though. Acceleration, I cranked all the way up to 70. It was at 65. Uh, your players should be able to get to top speed pretty quickly. There should be no kind of issue with that. Play, skating speed I left alone, that'll be based on the, the uh, stats. Skating agility I left alone, that'll be based on stats, stats as well. Uh, shooting, another big issue here. I left one-timer accuracy alone. You guys are pretty, they're already pretty good at nailing one-timers. I don't think we need to adjust that. Uh, shot accuracy, the wrist shot accuracy, I raised five points. I felt like they should be able to shoot snipers and such. Uh, I have a video showing a couple examples of that later. The shot power, I also increased. I want them to shoot a little faster. Not by much, just a little bit. And then slap shot accuracy, I actually left the same. And I increased the slap shot power. This will still prevent the D to D one timer far side. But if you have a good player like Duncan Keith, you will bury it. Passing, another big... Uh, issue for some people. Pass assist is set to 33%. Uh, you may want to... They may just want to make that how it's set. I don't think that you should be allowed to adjust this in a competitive game mode. Online, basically. Uh, min pass speed, I left alone. I actually bumped it up. I think it was at 35. I bumped it up. Max pass speed, I left alone. Saucer pass speed, left alone. Pass accuracy actually lowered after I watched one of my 67 overalls sauce it between three people for a goal. So I actually lowered that. I don't think they. Uh, I don't know if it's a game mechanic that the your player will automatically sauce the pass. I could not find a setting for that, so I just lowered this overall to see if that would help. Interceptions. It's at 80. Wow, so high. It needs to go down to 60, guys. It's down. This is where you'll notice a big difference in how well your game plays right here. Uh, they can still intercept the pass. Like I said, there's be a video for it. And they it doesn't matter. They, they can lower it to 60 and still be okay. 
pass reception ease, I lowered to 40. React reception reaction time. Uh, this is an interesting one. These two really are. And that is how much reaction time affects a player's ability to pick up the puck. So if you raise this stat, your player is going to have a harder time. It's going to take more time to recover a pass that is not right on their tape. If you lower it, it doesn't matter where they kind of throw the puck, your guy will be able to pick it up and immediately operate with it. Puck control rating effect, I cranked this up to 70. I think this should be super important. The higher the rating of the puck control of the player with the puck, the better they will be able to control the puck. Yeah, so I cranked that way up. I, it's possible you could even set it at 100, but... Puck speed react, uh, reception effect, I don't think puck speed should matter too much, so I loaded that to 40. Pickup type effect, I left alone. Bouncing puck reception is another big one. This needs to be cranked down. If the puck is bouncing, the player should be able to miss it, and it bounce over their stick. It's way up, and it should be cranked, it's cranked down to 35. Uh, puck control, another one that people have issues with. I left this as zero, I left that the same. Puck control, I raised down to 40. Actually, I don't know if I raised or lowered it. I might have just left it alone. But it's at 40 right now. That's just overall puck control, how well your player can hold on to the puck when he is being hit. Left it at 40. I don't think when someone's being hit, they should be able to hold on to the puck. It's just not how it works. Deking impact, I lowered that to 20. Spin deke impact lowered to 40. That means how well your players can, uh, how likely your players are to lose the puck while doing these two dekes. I actually lowered them. I think anybody can do a spin deke in this game. In, in NHL 20, I think you should be able to do a spin deke with most of the players you perform with. Maybe not in real life, but in NHL 20, I think that is fair. Skating impact, zero. Keep it at zero. Goalies, big issue here. I hate the way they set up this tuner. They only have cross crease, reaction time, deflection, screens. And that's it. They don't have anything for high, lows, five hole, nothing. You can't improve any of those. You can only improve general abilities. So, cross crease. I lowered this goalie cover frequency so they throw it out in single player. That's not important. Cross crease reaction time, I actually bumped it up to 30. Bumped it up, I'm sorry, actually bumped it up to 60. I bumped it up by 10 from 50. And I, I still buried backdoors nonstop. So this this is fine. Uh, goalie save reaction time, I bumped up 5 trying to stop those. Uh, this made a huge difference. It stopped that blue line far side snipe that people try to pull online. They won't be able to bury it every single time you're gonna need a good guy to do it goalie deflection reaction time huge issue this is all the way down to 30 if there is a deflection the goalie should have no time to react unless it just hits him that is how deflections work goalie screen effect way up to 70 goalie screened he can't see the puck he shouldn't be able to make a save i mean i don't know it's just how it is goalie screen persistence is 70 i kept it the same as the effect Persistence mean how long it takes a goalie to find the puck when the screen is removed. It's going to take him a minute. It's not going to be like, I instantly have it after this guy moved out of the way. Checking. Oh, spent so long on this. Uh, I left these the same. Hitting assistant went down to 20. Stumble threshold, I left the same. I think it's fine where it's at right now. But this is where we get interesting. Uh, hitting power, leave the same. You have other uh, tuners you can adjust to fix this. Size effect, way up to 70. It's set at like 20 right now. It needs to be up to 70. If The bigger the player is, the more impact it has when it hits a player of different size. So yes, that's all the way up to 70. Speed effect needs to go down though. If you increase speed effect and size effect, your people will just get crushed all fucking game. Like you can put this up to like... 40 and every single per, every single hit in the game is a big hit and somebody gets injured so i left this down here at 33 i have videos to show all of the the hitting especially 
show you how it affect the hitting. The checking balance rating effect all the way up to 83. Definitely needs to matter. If your player has good balance, he should not be bumped off the puck. It's just how it works, guys. All the way up to 83. I know that was set super low by EA. Preparedness effect, I turned down. I don't think it in this kind of style of gameplay, it should matter if your guy is passing the puck. He can't. He's not ready for a hit. I, whatever you guys want to set this to. But it will affect how easy it is to check someone with the puck. Uh, incidental contact, way down to 20. And poke, oh, here we go. More defense stuff. Poke checking. Bumped it up to 60, guys. I did it. And it, it worked out perfectly in this following video. You'll see. Poke checking power actually lowered down to 40. That's how hard they poke check the puck off the stick. At 40, they basically just kind of like tap it off the stick. So if you guys got good puck control, you will be able to pick it up and continue with it. Stick lift effectiveness up to 60. Got to work. Players in the NHL don't take too many slashing calls. You can't spam it though. You will not be able to spam it with the 60. Uh, penalties. There are a couple that you need to adjust here. One of them is... Boarding. Here it is. Boarding. Boarding is if your player smashes a dude face first into the boards, that's a boarding call. So you definitely need to crank that up because I watched several players do it and it was very unfair. So if your player gets violently smashed in the boards, you want the penalty called. So I cranked it up to 65. And charging I left alone. Delay of game I left alone. I also cranked up holding. This is a critical one. Uh, the holding being increased to 70 will prevent people from tying you up with the puck and then you kick out the puck to a lone man and then they just stand there and hold you on the boards. If a holding is cranked up, that will automatically be a holding call. Also in front of the net, if someone tries to tie someone up in front of the net and they just continue to hold them, that'll get called down too. Hooking 50. Interference, I cranked up to 83 because there was some goalie interference that I didn't, that wasn't there. Uh, haven't gotten it called yet, so it's probably okay. And then the final one is AI. AI learning I have set on 60. This doesn't matter because obviously in an online game mode you'll be playing a different person. Alright, so here are my videos. As you can see, this guy it's, intercepts it <coughs> and sprints up the ice for an easy backdoor one-timer. That's the acceleration being shown now. Here we got a little bit of a... Another acceleration video. You can see here, I pick it up and I'm immediately up the ice full speed just as it should for a back door. This is with the improved uh, goalies and back doors. Here we're going to show off the passing a little bit there. Guy is not looking. There's no reason why he should be able to intercept it. He's got his back turned, everything. We pick it up put it in the hoop that was a big one i don't like them intercepting like that and he did he's just guessing at that point he's literally just guessing where that puck is he doesn't deserve to get an overturn there so there goes that we have another this will be displaying some of the hits here as you can see not a clean hit it made him stumble i don't know why my guy didn't pick up the puck there but as you can see he's still back it wasn't a clean hit but then a little further down, it was a clean hit and got smashed. So that's fair. That That's fair right there. If you get a square on hit, you should destroy him. If you don't, then you shouldn't hit him. Here's a poke check video. As you can see, the first poke check worked perfectly. And then the second poke check, I tripped him. So, as you can see, you can still get poke checks in. They just aren't overpowered. Look at that. Nice little poke check to try to get rid of the puck there. And then, but if you try to spam it, you're probably going to get a tripping call. So, I think they could have increased poke checks there. Here is a video on the hitting. I think there's a couple hits. There's one that just got destroyed there. Square on. Hit him square on. Off. It wasn't square there. So as I'm cycling the puck, see, he didn't hit me very square.
Here we're gonna another hitting video here. Big, uh, big. Uh, I think that's Wierenski coming in hard. Square on though. He got him square on. That's a good hit. Might have been an elbowing. Probably should raise elbowing so that doesn't happen anymore. Here's a turnover. You see, they still intercepted the puck. Nothing changed there. And then you'll see here, he tries to hit me. It, it wasn't square. But then as soon as I try to, he gets me square, I'm dead. I'm fucking done. I think I just got, well, I might have been injured there. So that is my short video on the best tuner available for NHL 20. Go ahead and try it out, guys. Whoa, I don't want that. Uh, go ahead, try it out. See how you like it. Adjust it at your own, you know, however you want to adjust it, adjust it. Let me get back to me if you like it, don't like it. Hopefully EA will see it and maybe put it in. I don't know. But thanks for watching, guys. Look for uh, look in the future for more videos from me about NHL. Thank you.